Hey, and welcome back to the channel. We're back with Project Pepper. As I mentioned, I'm gonna drop this video right away because I am being challenged by the ultimate, ultimate issue on my 911 here, and that is the P0452 code. Some of you are going, that code? That's easy to diagnose. Well, not when you do it my way. And sometimes my way was the right way, and other times, and most of the time, it was the wrong way. I reached out to some actual mechanics, and one in particular helped me out. I'm gonna talk about him later in this video, who was able to help me figure this out, and it was not easy. It was not as simple as you think. But in the process, I wanna show you the entire path of troubleshooting that I took, including overspending on parts. Yes, that's right, Yogi overspending on parts. Do I ever do that, Yogi Mama? Uh, I plead the fifth. Okay, that's probably the right answer. <laughs> yeah, so I wanna show you some of the parts that I bought, like the vents and unnecessary parts and a really expensive part, even though it's so tiny. All of that stuff I'm gonna talk about, but then I, ultimately I'm gonna show you what solved the, the issue. And what you see here before me is just a small sample of tools that I had to use in order to diagnose this issue. So you'll see a multimeter, uh, a continuity tester, things like that that are necessary to track electrical problems in your car. I thought I was done with that when I fixed the convertible top. I was like patting myself on the back thinking, man, I got this. And yet <laughs> I put the engine together like three months ago and it still can't pass inspection. Well, it can now because of the P0452 error. So without further ado, Project Pepper, P0452, let's fix it. Round one, fight. All right, as part of getting the car restored back to almost factory new, which is probably not gonna happen, but I'm gonna do my best. Uh, I need to get a new gas cap. The, the one that came with it was damaged. My friend Bruce, Tex Squirrel, gave me one a couple of years ago. I'm still getting a check engine light about a fuel vent. So I've got a, a new fuel vent solenoid or whatever it is, a valve right here that's underneath this, this towel. I'm having that replaced as well. I'm, I'm still waiting on the part. However, the gas cap could also be a culprit. And you can see that the seal in there is cracked pretty good. So I went ahead and got a new one, OEM from Porsche, and it came with a tether. So I had to figure out where the tether went and it ended up going right here at the bottom and it uses an expansion rivet. And uh, you know, expansion rivets are typically a one way. If you're careful, you can get them out by pushing in the center pin. But I had a few left over from my spoiler repair video. If you haven't seen that, be sure to check it out. I repaired the pop-up spoiler on the back. It had a bunch of these rivet pins uh, missing, so I order a whole bunch and I have extras. So these look like they go in there. Yep. So I'm going to put that in there and tether it in like it originally was. Nice little added feature. So this vent valve wraps around the, the actual filler neck and you can see that there is a physical component to this, which is this little valve here or actuator that opens and closes the valve. And I think this is what fails and it gets dirty. So this guy is about $150, but it will eliminate the check engine light that you get, which really sucks when you're trying to get this car inspected. So I'm not gonna screw around, new gas cap, new fuel vent valve, and then we should be good to go to get this car inspected. All right, hot off the press as it came right in. You can see the condition of this particular actuator and it's way more forgiving than this thing, which is already partially depressed. I mean, it feels fine, but nevertheless, this needed to be replaced. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in. It's gonna be a piece of cake. Let's take care of it. Yeah, so Pelican Parts has a really good write-up on this and there's a video for it as well, but it's pretty simple. This guy wraps around the right side of the filler neck and then there's a metal bracket that will connect to the filler neck and the uh, valve and then it attaches to the car right there. So let's get it all in, a couple 10 mils. Okay, so before you close everything up, one of the things that Pelican Parts did not bring up is uh, there's a reed sensor, and I'm, a I'm assuming it's some kind of temperature or ambient sensor, but it connects right back in there. Let me see if I can get a, 
focus, but there's a little wire that goes to like a little stick sensor, but it ends up in this little detent here. So be sure you clip that in before you close it up. Pelican Parts did not mention that. So I had to loosen up the bracket again just a little bit to get a mechanics pick in there to raise the plastic to slide that reed sensor in there. This has been a Yogi's Tech Tip. All right, and there, all done. All buttoned up, not a big deal. Probably took, I don't know, 30 minutes to get it done. Worth it, I think, to make sure that you can get your car to pass inspection. <laughs> so as part of fixing that round two, fight. I got to get access to the fuel pump because there is that fuel vent valve that I bought the replacement part for. So I need to take this battery cover off. Those are 13 mils. And then underneath is the fuel pump along with all of the extras that I'm looking for. Let's do this. All right. So right there, that those two connectors connect to this, which is right here, the newer piece, the fuel tank vent valve, not the fuel pressure sender valve but the fuel tank pressure valve and it's got those one-time use uh compression fit hose clamps that really suck okay i got it out sort of it's still connected on the other end to the electrical sensor but i got it out of that styrofoam mold right there i'm sure if you can see it but that right there i had to cut a slit onto the side to push it out sideways i took this vent hose off now I can take this off and then it should just come right out and I can disconnect it. But uh, I mean, it should come out now just like this, right? All I gotta do is just connect that connector, pull that off and replace it. Okay, it's out. Like I said it went something like this. And I don't know whether or not this valve is bad or not, to be honest. There's a way of testing it. There's a way of testing this valve, but um, Given that this car has been through a lot, I went ahead and bought the, the new one, even though it's over $300. Because, you know, if anything can go wrong in this car, something will go wrong in this car because of the way it was treated early on. So I'm not taking any chances. Anyway, I'm gonna put the new one. All right, now that it's reinstalled, I gotta do the dreaded crimping with these silver things here. I got a couple of new ones here. And I've got my crimping tool here. This will make short work of that. I just gotta use two hands to get in there. It's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. And I may need Yogi Mama to give me a hand. Okay, in there, man, that is not fun. I had to get Yogi Mama to help me pull this valve out of here a little bit because those crimpers are designed to go really wide. Here, take a look, right? So it's kind of hard to get it when it's all the way seated. So I had to pull it up a little bit, change the angle a little bit, and then she could start squeezing it. And once it, start ra once it started ratcheting, I took over and finished it off. So I'm gonna take full credit for that. But anyway, it's back in. I'm gonna close it up and keep my fingers crossed. This solves the problem. Oh man, if things couldn't get any worse, I must have knocked or hit this enough to cause a little hairline crack right there. And that's all she wrote. It starts leaking gas, so. During my testing of the canister purge valve, I buttoned everything up and I started smelling a strong fuel smell. So I knew something was up, took everything out and I saw a puddle of gas in here. So not good. This has to be replaced. And unfortunately, the whole unit has to come out and be sold as one. But the guys that are smarter than me told me that this is a common issue. The car is 21 years old. This was inevitable. Unfortunately, it happened at the worst time because I'm dumping money into trying to fix this problem. And this just added another 300 bucks. Joy. <laughs> Round right. three, fight. Is obviously you want to take the battery out, discharge any built up energy by letting the car sit for about 10 minutes and then start disconnecting stuff, right? So I've got this disconnected. I got this disconnected. I got the the control disconnected. Everything's taken off. And then I believe from the factory, it comes with this glue, uh, basically like a seal, letting the dealership 
or the certified mechanic know that this has not been tampered with by the owner, but too bad. All right, so now the next thing you need to do is turn this collar, and the easiest way to do it is to just, I mean, you can get a special tool, but you know, why? Get a screwdriver, your, your impact mallet, and just hammer away, and I'll show you. You hammer away right here and turn it until it loosens up. And then you can loosen it up the rest of the way, and this thing should come right up with a little bit of finagling. But of course, you want to cover this area up. You don't want to get gasoline all over your car because that's sitting in gas. And like me, mine is um, got a, almost a full tank. So that's not helping matters either. The other thing you want to worry about too is you don't want any of this crap to get into your fuel tank either. So be sure to clean up as much as possible the top here because you don't want any of that falling in when you pick it up and pull it out. All right, this looks like a one-to-one -one replacement. This is the entire fuel pump unit. So I got to replace the whole thing, no big deal. So I don't need to worry about, you know, swapping parts. The only thing I need to swap is that gasket. And I'll go ahead and do that now. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. But I can get that back in there and start this car up. This is not a difficult project. All right, pump is almost in next time. And for those of you watching and wanting and about to do this yourself, uh, be sure you order a new gasket. I didn't order a new one. It's not too bad, but it's a little stretched out. Uh, it's really probably not necessary, but it still wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, let me button this up and we'll get this car started. <laughs> all right this is getting really out of hand fight. spending all this money trying to chase down this p0452 error i took care of the fuel sender valve that i shouldn't have taken care of i took care of the fuel vent mechanism on the filler neck all of that and i'm still not having luck resolving the fuel vent issue so my next step is to test this guy right here this purge valve. Now, if you remember, I refused to replace this hose here because it is stupid expensive. It's like $67. But, you know, at this point, I need to get my car inspected. And uh, I'm really sick and tired of waiting for my engine to reach a smog ready state. Um, so I've got I've, I've to track it down. And if it's this freaking hose, it's this freaking hose and I'll replace it. But um, what I need to do first is take this out. It's really simple. There's a release on this side over here. Unplug the power and then take this hose off and that'll take that thing free. All right, let's do it. Okay, we're on the bench with the EVAP purge valve here. And uh, I ran a, a 12 volt test on it and it came back no problem. It's opening and closing. The next recommendation that I got uh, was from a guy on Renlist, and he's been extremely helpful, and I, I believe he's a master Porsche mechanic uh, or something to that effect, and his name is... All right, Porsche Tech 3, and I'll put his information right here below the screen. He's a fellow member on Renlist. He's also, I believe, a master mechanic, and uh, he goes by Skip. And basically what he's telling me is that I needed to do a vacuum test on this. So that's what I did. I got this pump here from my coolant kit and for those of you who've been following me you know that this is the kit that i use to refill the coolant on pepper my 2002 porsche which is the one we're working on right now and the idea is that i wanted to create a vacuum to verify that this thing holds pressure and it does i put it in about five maybe less psi on it you don't need a whole lot and you can see i made my little uh contraption here with some surgical tubing i tried both ends Everything checks out. And guess what? Even this thing, which I told you guys I was not going to replace because Porsche wants a stupid number for this. I think it's like 60 bucks. Uh, it's, it's holding pressure, so it's not leaking, although it's about to start leaking in any, any moment. And when it does, I'll replace it. But I just have an issue with overpriced BS from manufacturers. All right, so let's go see what I'm going to do next. So for some of you guys, this might look familiar. This here is a smoke tester and it requires compressed air, 12 volt battery. And I've run it and you saw me do it on my engine build videos where I tested the vacuum on the engine here, but it's also useful for testing for EVAP leaks 
in your system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test for leaks from here. Now, again, I keep mentioning my past videos because you know that I pulled the filler neck so that I could drain the gasoline during the engine build series because I didn't want the gas to sit in here for too long and turning into turpentine. I wasn't 100% convinced that I put the filler neck in right and it may be leaking from there because everything else checks out and I'm really tired of buying parts, right? All right, so I gotta get a plug to fit this. If I don't have a plug, I can probably use a surgical glove and just wrap it around that thing and poke a hole in it and stick the, the tube in there. And this should identify where the leak is coming from, I hope. Okay, I think I got one that might work. Let's see if I got it on the first try. Ooh, that looks good. Okay, fixed. Yeah, I just wrapped some electrical tape around it. I think I put about two layers on there and it goes right in there now. And there, see, that'll hold. Then I can get the probe in there and it should push, push past that gate uh, to get the smoke in there. And then what I'm thinking is gonna happen is when I fill the tank full of smoke, I'll raise the, uh, the hood here and look underneath to see if I see any smoke coming out. And I'll probably use a black light because that stuff is pretty luminescent under that light. All right, I got this thing in a vise because I need to put a hole in it. And it's gonna take the largest size, which is I believe 3 8 I believe. Uh, all right, let's do this. See? Easy, man. Okay, we are set up. I've got my smoke tester ready to go. Plugged in with some power. It's currently heating up. And I've got my air, battery, and a black light. So let's figure it out. And I've got it open here so if any smoke comes out of there. Here we go. Looks like the smoke is starting to come out. Is that better? Yeah, here we go. All right, let's just put this in here. Let's take a wait and see. I'm gonna have to probably put my hand on here because this thing is gonna build pressure, but we'll see. All right, we're starting to see some smoke coming out of the filler neck here, but I don't see a smoking gun. That looks like it's just because it's filled up. Let me see underneath. Okay, I took it another, another step <laughs> and I got the car up on a jack or a lift here and I pulled the panel down so I can get a good look under there and in that hole there where it's supposed to seal. I think I found the issue, but we'll see. All right, so now that I got the heat going again, let's plug this thing back up and see if we can find the leak. Yeah, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing anything. Okay, I learned Jack Diddley squat. <laughs> Nothing's leaking. Not even from where I thought it was gonna leak down there on the collar. Nothing. I don't know what else to do, man. I don't know. Maybe reach around and like grab it all the way around and shove it in all the way around. <laughs> All right, no, so as you saw, I still have a problem. Um, I cannot find the leak anywhere because to be honest, I don't think there really is a major one. I think the problem is with the filler neck. <laughs> and like I mentioned a moment ago, when I took the filler neck out to drain the fuel during the engine rebuild, if you haven't seen those videos, be sure to check it out. I rebuilt the engine in this car. I uh, put the filler neck in, but it looks like I may have put the filler neck in in the wrong order, meaning there is a collar that goes around there and it's foam and a metal O-ring backing plate. And I put it together all in one piece. And what I should have done is put the collar in first. All right, so first things first is you obviously want to disconnect the power and I've, the car has been disconnected all night. I would advise you let it go for about five to 10 minutes before you start doing anything that way. If there's any built up charges anywhere, you're safe. Okay, 
10 mil, let's start with that. Let's fix it. I feel like I just did this. I did. All right, disconnect. That's been disconnected. This is no big deal. There's a little tab underneath here like that, you see? But it's also connected to the fuel overfill drain. You just gotta pop that out as well. You can see it right there. And then like I said, oh, look, it came right off. All right, these are your two vents. Squeeze it, pull. Squeeze, pull. Get these out of the way. Your ground right there. And this sensor, I'll use two hands for that. And then you do a kind of a counterclockwise twist to get it out. So down there, you can see the, uh, the ring and I'm just gonna try to work it out. Yeah, here it comes. All right, so let me use two hands to twist it out. All right, in case you wonder what camera I'm using here, this is my Insta360. It's what I've been using to get those awesome driving videos. <laughs> I'm using a uh, silicone spray on my hand so I don't scratch it up. Okay, here's a closer look at what we're dealing with here. It's this foam collar here that I believe is the culprit of not, of getting a bad read on my tank pressure. I think you can see here that it never really got a good seat. This has got to go in the ring, in the opening, and then this goes on top to seat it all together. All right. Let me try to do that. Okay, so down there, you can see what I'm aiming for. Yeah, so I gotta stick this collar in there first and then put the put the tubing in. So let me give that a go. Yeah, I don't know, man. It looks kinda like a bunghole, if you ask me. Uh, not optimistic, that's gonna fit. Okay, I went ahead and put the collar back on this neck, but I didn't fully seat it. So now I'm gonna try to get my hand in there and try to shove that foam collar into the ring and seal it up. That's the only thing I can think of. Okay, I think I got it in there, but uh, I'm not entirely convinced that uh, it's gonna it's gonna solve the problem, but it is shoved in there more than it was. I just can't get a good grip on it, and there's absolutely no way to get that in with the sphincter looking like that, because it's uh, it just pushes it in. It's not gonna seal anything. All right. Okay. Round six, fight. So you can see the P0452. The problem with this is that every time I clear the code, it would come right back. I got the new sensor in. I shouldn't be getting that. I may have to start the car up and build some pressure. I don't know, but we'll see with the first test. So the first thing I want to do is erase the codes and hope that it doesn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. All right, I need to pause right here. Have you ever had one of those days where everything just goes off the rails? Well, there's a huge chunk of the timeline missing here because I just took it out during editing. But it goes something like this. I was testing for continuity to the sensor from the wrong control unit. Take a wild guess which one I was looking at when I should have been looking at the other one. I'll leave it right there and start the video. Okay, I feel like a jackass. Final round. I don't know what I was Fight. thinking, but that right there is not, and you guys are probably screaming at the TV, saying that is not the ECU. That is the ECU. And I had the wrong one connected. So I did it again. P connector four is this black one right here. Pin 21, continuity test, uh, goes fine. Continuity to the sensor, 
Uh, the other brown wire as well, continuity checks out. What doesn't check out is voltage. So I'm not getting the required five volts to the red wire. That's the supply line. The blue one down here is the return, the bleed back, I think is what he called it. And then the brown one here is a ground. So when I test it from here, after I put power on the booster, which gives me about 16 volts, I get 0.15 volts from there. And then he told me to test it because the ECU is the one that generates the five volts to test the, the wire going to the sensor, which is this one right here. I just tapped into it and I got 0.16 volts. So something in there is causing a problem that's not generating the necessary five volts. So this is what I'm gonna do thanks to Skip and his advice. I'm gonna tap into the mass airflow sensor five volt supply and jump it into the five volt supply to the vent. And we'll see what that does. So let me jump that over and I'll show you what it looks like. The first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna test to make sure that is indeed a five volt line. And there you go. Five volts from that line on connector number two is from the mass airflow sensor. So I'm gonna jump it and feed the other sensor. Wow, this is awesome. I got the jumper soldered in. That's the five volt from the mass airflow sensor to the fuel vent. No power, grounded. Let's go to put some juice to it. All right. Systems on. Huh. Oh, keys on. I'm only getting 0 0.25. <laughs> All right, it is now almost six o'clock and I finally found the issue and it's uh, not a voltage issue being supplied by the uh, ECU, but a voltage problem because it's shorted to ground here, this wire. This wire here goes to the sensor. This feeds voltage to the sensor. And it comes from this connector where this roach clip is at. So I tested uh, continuity here and I also tested voltage and there's a short somewhere here because it blew a fuse too. And when I tested voltage coming from the ECU, I get my five volts. So the problem is here. I also get five volts down here from the mass airflow sensor, which I don't need now. So I can, re I can patch that up and leave that alone. And the problem is here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a long wire all the way over there and tap it in and prove that the, this, the sensor will get a proper reading. I am beat. All right, I got the wire run. You can see the red wire going all the way over here. And I splice it into the power line on the, on the wire. And now we should be good to go. So I'm gonna go crank it up and see what happens. So I'm feeding five volts, bypassing that short. Oh man, look at that. That is what I need to see. Okay. So you think uh, the uh, Texas inspection department will have an issue with running five volts outside the car? <laughs> it's only five volts and it fixes the problem. Oh man, my back hurts. I tell you what, I pulled the battery out of that car at least a dozen times today. And I got super strong arms to prove it. And I blew a fuse because I shorted it out. All kinds of things happened, but I got it done. Hallelujah. Give your respect. Yeah, I think this wire here will pass inspection. I mean, it is Texas, right? Yeah, so this ended up being the solution. You saw that. It was an actual short to ground in the wire itself going from the back to the sensor. It wasn't the sensors, it wasn't the valves, it wasn't anything else other than that. So if there's any advice that I can give you on this, is don't be like me, throwing a whole bunch of money at it. And I mentioned it several times in the video, it's because this car came from Florida and it was really abused. So I was just thinking it's probably a part, but guess what? It wasn't, it was a wire. 
I spent over a thousand dollars in parts, I think, and not, not even counting my time to get this thing resolved. So don't do what I do, but do what I did at the end and start at the foundation and work your way up until you can identify exactly what's wrong. Thanks for watching Yogi's Garage. We'll see you next time.